So here we go. I'm just gonna start and we're just gonna go and we're just gonna do this and... <laughs> Hello and welcome to Mocha Sets Create. Creating is hard. Get inspired and learn with us. I'm your host, Monica Maldonado, and I'm joined by my co-host, Corey Willis. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I'm offended that you didn't sing mine as well as you sang yours. You're a little more creative with, well, with yours. Well, my name mine. has more of a flow than Corey oh. Willis. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I should have said Corey Dale Willis. That's better. Yeah, it's great. Is that better? It's perfect. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I would give you like a two and a half star rating. Out of what? Three? Fifty. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> fine, if, if we're being honest here. <clears throat> okay, fine. I'll make it up next week. All right. You better. <laughs> um, so today we are going to discuss what our ideas and maybe experiences are on whether we think creating gets easier as we keep practicing it. Mm -hmm. hmm. Will mm -hmm. it get easier? Does it even ever get easier? I don't know. What do you think? I think that it's yes and no. It is yes and no, in my opinion, as well. <laughs> yes and no. That's why I wrote, it depends, question it depends. mark. <laughs> and then I put yes and no. <laughs> yep. So um, usually, like, I was kind of thinking about this lately when um, I see some artists or even, like, I guess any kind of creator um, will post a then and now picture of their work. And it's like, oh, this is how my drawing of a dog looked like in 2004. And this is how it looks now. And there's, it's just, you know, Night improved so much. Yeah. And um, not even like with a 13 or whatever year difference. It could even be like a year difference. You mm -hmm. could just see progress. And it's like, oh, wow, they make it look so easy now. Or they'll say, this is so much easier. Um, but... And then I wonder as a craft, as a creator, I'm like, will it ever get easier? Will I ever reach that point also? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the question is, does it get easier? Yes and no. But for one thing, it will always take work, in my opinion, I think. Right. Like unless you're just gets... kind of churning out garbage, which <laughs> some people do. But if you're a creator who always is looking to improve and to one up their last project yeah and not just you know, i feel like some artists become like a factory like once they establish mm. their style it, it's just like no offense to one of monica's favorite artists okay thomas kincaid <laughs> what okay yeah he's like a favorite but like, i'm not like in love with his but like you know what i'm saying like he <laughs> yes. just sort of he has his thing and they're all kind of the same Yes. Um, some people That's like just like their style. They lock they... in, and like you want your style. But I feel like some people pinpoint their style so well mm -hmm. that it's like it just becomes like a formula. Yeah. And I feel like uh, I don't know, if better is the right word because you know Thomas Kincaid stuff is nice. And right. It's but it's very like inoffensive and not. I... It doesn't push any boundaries and it's not yes. trying to do anything crazy. Yes. Whereas I feel like a lot of creators like I always want to try to do I one up my last project, not mm -hmm. just like do more of the same. Yeah. And so I feel like a lot I feel of like it, it, it's yes. If you want to be basic, <laughs> no, <laughs> if you always want to push yourself. Hashtag basic. Hashtag basic yes, art. That's very true. I think I've seen a lot of artists struggle with that. And sometimes it's a bummer because they have to be creating the same thing in order to make income, like right. a good amount. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like with Thomas Kincaid, that's what people love. And he's yeah. like, Oh, I'll make more of this. And like, he sold so many because it's the same thing. Right, exactly. Um, so I totally understand what, what you're saying. That makes a lot yeah, of sense. Not, not to trash talk no, no, no. Thomas Kincaid. But, but that I was just, just an example. Everyone knows him and everyone knows his style. Correct. And, you know, like, yeah. and I think even other people literally have, like, sub-branded or whatever you want to call it. Like, Thomas Kincaid didn't actually paint this thing. Because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he was dead before oh. some of his paintings <laughs> came out. Yeah. But it's like, he's almost, it's more of a brand. Correct. It's Thomas Kincaid brand because somebody true. else can just like replicate it because yeah. it's so, uh, so well defined that people mm -hmm. can just do his style and sell it under his name. You know what That's I mean? That's true. Yeah. 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 Um, I see what you're saying. I kind of like artists that have stages sometimes. 
like, oh, look, this was when he was in his 20s and this is completely different than what he paints now in his 30s or whatever. Yeah, exactly. You could see growth and mm -hmm. just change in your personality and so on. But that's a different topic for another day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so, it's a fun topic. I love discussing that. Yeah, that would be a fun one. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I think the core of this is that parts of your creative process will get easier. Yeah. But... It will allow you to then move to more advanced techniques mm -hmm. that are even more difficult. Yes. But the core process will become easier. So the writing, there's there's like the early writing struggles and then like the mid then late. You know what I mean? Like early on, it's like you struggle with just grammar and making the story interesting. Yeah. And then you move to like, OK, I need to actually have like a more uh, rigid structure. Mm -hmm. um, so you learn a lot about structure and implement that into it. And then it's like, OK, now I need this whole nother level of if you want to get into like meta writing and like having like a deeper meat. There's like, there's so many different levels to writing that like, you don't really deal with that. You're just like early on, you're just like, I'm just kind of just jumbling stuff together. And like that part gets easier. Do you like your, your tone and style and your, your uh, basic sentence structure and paragraph structure that all gets locked in. And that's like, you don't even think about it. Yeah. But then it just lets you tackle even <laughs> bigger issues like structure. Yeah. And pacing and the more, uh, like uh, smaller details that add up, like you spend way more time on those um, as you become more advanced. So yeah, it never really gets easy. I think like you were saying, it's not like, it's like, oh, this is a breeze, but like <laughs> parts of it become a breeze. Right. Like because once you, you know tackle how, yeah, yeah, you know how to tackle it now. Right. You've learned how to react to certain things. You know what to expect. So it's like, okay, now you can kind of not overlook, but now you don't have to focus so much on that. Now you have these other things you can focus more on in order to become like, I don't know, a more well-rounded artist, a more um, uh, like proactive artist about one certain thing, like you were saying. Yeah, I think just in general, creating art just takes work from all the levels of your brain. Right. <laughs> so that in itself is not easy. Like it never is. Mm -hmm. It will always take work, whether mentally, emotionally, physically, it always will take work. It's just you're getting stronger at it yeah, as you exactly. go and as you learn and as you experience. Yeah. And I think there's three major stages. There's the stage early on where you're breaking the rules because you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and then you learn all the rules and your writing yeah. is more or and, and painting is more confined and following the rules. And then you break the rules again because you know the rules and you're willfully breaking them to do something more interesting. Yeah. So I, I feel like my writing like early on broke rules because like I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And like now I'm in the more of the structuring phase and a little bit of the breaking rules on purpose. Yeah. Because I know the, more of the rules now. So yeah, if if I'm doing it, I'm, I'm doing it because I want to. Right. <laughs> and, and it's the <laughs> same with painting. Not because you don't know. Yeah, exactly. It's not like you're just uh, early on, you're just sloppy because with painting because you don't know what you're doing and then you kind of right. get more structured and then you break out of that yeah in like exactly. your, your final phase mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly what that is but that's the most challenging is like knowing when you're breaking a rule because it'll let you do something really interesting and when it's just like gonna fail yeah and that takes the most work yes that's true i didn't even think about that <laughs> yeah there are many times even now but mainly mostly in the past when People will comment like, oh, I really love your color, your color scheme, like the colors you chose for this. Like, well, how did your palette look like? I'm like, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, my palette. <laughs> it's like I honestly just chose random colors and, po and I was just winging it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like you said, you know, it takes structure. It takes planning your color scheme. Like what colors do I want next to each other? Um, it there is a difference when you do it randomly. I mean, there is really no hardcore structure in art, but. It is good to know the value, like what value means or like what your palette, like what making a palette is, um, because then you realize that structure. And like you said, it's like, oh, now I can I know how to break the rules, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. So so that uh, this first part was really about the uh, the actual process becoming easier or harder. Correct. And the next point we want to touch on is the. Sure the more 
the emotional side. The emotional Just, do side. The, does the emotional side <laughs> does become it get easier? Easier. I feel like one thing that I wanted to kind of make a note of is that when you're in the process of getting stronger at your craft and run wondering whether or not you'll reach a certain point that another artist has reached or just the point that where it feels easy even though it's not <gasps> um but where it feels easy to you there's always a struggle of you feeling alone in that because a lot of people can't relate to you like you'll say oh this is so hard or this it's just so hard for me to do and people will be like um, you're just putting paint on a canvas. What's hard about that? You know, it's so easy. Just put red here. Just put orange here. And it's like, you don't understand. And they're like, oh, you're so, artists are so dramatic. We don't understand you. Pfft. It's like, no, seriously, you don't understand. <laughs> like if you've never mentally put yourself into that creative mode, um, into realizing how much work it takes emotionally, like you can literally pour out your emotions when you're creating something. People who have never done that will never understand how it feels. It, I don't know. It's like when people compare. I, I want to compare, I guess, like when people have a kid and they're like, oh, you have no idea how it feels to have your own kid. It's like, yeah, you're right. I don't <laughs> because I don't have my own kid. I mean, it's kind of like the same if they've never created art. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so that's kind of where I was going with why you'll feel alone. And if you do feel alone, just realize that you really are doing a hard thing. Um, not many people can do what you're doing, what you're attempting to do even. Um, so who cares if people think what you do is easy <laughs> or if they think you're such a complainer or baby because you're saying, oh, this is too hard. It's like, yeah, you're doing a hard thing. So just do it and don't care what anyone else is saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and that also uh, people not understanding that it's not just a hobby for you. Yeah. Like, that's hard to explain, too. It's like, oh, well, that's that's what you do for, like, for fun, right? Yeah. It's like, no. <laughs> they'll be like, oh, well, I play pickleball. That's my hobby. It's like, great. <laughs> I don't know why that's the first thing that came to my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely more than a hobby. And don't tell, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Because this is your thing. Yeah, it's right. That's true. It's correct. It's right. <clears throat> So, anyway, so Monica had this other point on the uh, on the outline, but she's not sure what it means I anymore. Did and yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> this is what it happens. just says comparing and then I in parentheses of, yourself yeah, and others. Yeah. So I thought she was talking about uh, like don't compare yourself to uh, other, to other artists', artists processes. Like the, oh, they make it look so easy. <laughs> so I thought she was talking about that, where it's like don't don't feel. Uh, like inadequate or discouraged yeah. if someone else is way faster, like, especially if they've been doing it for like a long time. But yeah. I'm, that's not but what that's she meant. So, so I don't know. It, it wasn't related to the topic. So I was like, no, that's not what it was. I don't remember. If I ever do remember, I'll maybe add it I mean, to it, the website. I mean, it does comments. relate because you're like comparing, <laughs> like, you know, they make it look easy. Yeah. You know, they're yes. making it look oh, easy. Oh, maybe that's where I was going. Yeah, keep that's, going. That's, keep what going. I was, keep going. that's what I was saying. Oh, okay. Like other artists, professional artists who have like a million followers. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they do this, you know, like you see their time lapse and they make it look like, oh, they're just like, oh, you know, yeah. sipping time their coffee and spend 10 you. minutes yeah. doing this little thing. And like, it looks amazing. And like, yeah. look at yours. You spent like a month on, you're like, oh, <laughs> that's sad. Yeah. Don't it's compare like, to time lapses ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't know how long it actually took. But yeah. then it's just also, you know, they've been doing it for like 15 years. And if you've been doing it for like two, it's like you can't compare your speed mm -hmm. or your productivity yeah. um, or ease of working or whatever to someone like that. It's like, use that as an inspiration. Like I could get there one day, mm -hmm. but don't feel like, oh, I can't believe that I can't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't compare that. Yeah. And maybe that's where I was going with comparing it to yourself, even like seeing your own progress in the past and saying, oh, like, wow, like that's cool progress. I want to, I mean, it can be encouraging, but don't let it get to you so much that you just give up because you didn't take the same amount of time in progressing in whatever it is that you wanted to. Right. I feel like different areas of art can take different amounts of time depending on you. It's right. All and up then to something the that took you a half an hour when you were first starting and takes you way longer now, it's probably because you're doing it better now. Correct. And spending more time on it. Yeah. I mean, spending more quality time and it turns mm -hmm. into a better product. So don't be like, why is it taking so long? Yeah. It's like if the final product is is a superior product, then it's worth 
the extra time. Yes. So don't don't worry about that. Yeah. And I guess kind of like what we were saying at the beginning and what this podcast one is the episode is about is it was it feels easier but really it's the same it's at the same level of uh easiness (laughs) (laughs) of it's at the same level of whatever it is you know i guess easy hard level what's what is that thing called the meter the The meter the meter (laughs) the scale scale I don't know. Like, okay, if something is hard, it will always be hard. It's just how you approach it. That's right. kind of like what I was trying to close that section with, but it failed because I couldn't think of the level meter where, thing. Where, where, scale where, meter where, where, level where, 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 thing. Scale meter level. <laughs> this is how my brain thinks, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what goes brain on. Fart. Yeah. Um, yeah, so have you noticed anything like personally in your own work where something was hard at the beginning and now you're like oh this is so easy to do now I got this or do you think it really did get easier or did you just get better like what did you see in your own self (laughs) yeah like there's definitely parts of uh writing that have become much easier Mm -hmm. like um one thing I I sort of tackled as like I want to do this i want to have like my first sentence my first paragraph to really pull people in Mm. and i kind of nailed that whereas like early on like i don't know how to to get people's attention so like doing that's really easy um i think uh having more and this is more of like my past couple like very recent stories i've sort of had more well-rounded 3d characters as i say Uh that are more than just like this person's the grumpy person or something. You know what I mean? It's like they're more realized, yeah. uh, in-depth people yeah. that feel real. So that's something that was hard early on. I would kind of, I would have a plot, you know, I kind of just have these cut out characters within that story to just kind of push the story along. Mm-hmm. And instead now I have these characters that are actually fleshed out. And that's something that was very hard early, but it's kind of become easy just, uh, yeah. for me now. Um, so things like that, um, uh, structuring, mm-hmm. like overall structure, um, and implementing it. It's going to lie to you because I would always structure my stuff, but I didn't follow a, uh, a, a formula because mm-hmm. the, they, there's kind of, a, a common formula most people use and it, it sounds <laughs> formulaic, <laughs> but the thing <laughs> is you, you want that structure there, yeah. um, to, because the readers have certain expectations, but again, you can break those rules to break expectations at certain times, but you still want to follow this overall formula to keep the story flowing well. Whereas early on, my structure was such a mess that the story, what you would kind of feel it like this feels disjointed. And so following that formula and implementing it has made everything a lot easier hmm. in some ways, but that means I have to spend a week <laughs> structuring my book yeah. or my short story <laughs> before I even start. So yeah. it's harder, mm. but it's easier at the same time. See, so it's like, it just always takes work. Like, honestly, yeah, that's the thing. it's You're always work, but all these... you just, by working hard on something else, you made something else easier. Yeah. There's always struggles is kind of what you're saying. Not yeah. struggles, but yeah. Yeah. Like you, you make one part easier and one part harder. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. you make the actual writing process easier once you like the actual uh, prose of the novel, but then you spent way more time up front. Mm-hmm. And we, we've, I think we even had an episode on developing the world versus actually working on the project. Oh yeah. Planning versus, Planning versus you know, that's a whole another it. thing. We have an episode on that. That's yeah, a whole right. other thing, but like you definitely do need that prep time. Yeah. It's just For knowing, sure. knowing what's too long. Yeah. <laughs> if you're spending two and a half years prepping, you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. You're right. I agree. Yeah. I think, um, ultimately it feels easier, but really it's taking the same amount of energy from you you just know you're more proactive about it or you just know how to work into it. Um, you know how to approach it, I think is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> um, yeah, and I've definitely seen it in my own work. And even just now, recently with doing Inktober, um, because I'm kind of working, I don't have the fancy inks. I have India ink somewhere, which is like the black ink that people use for 
Inktober because, duh, you paint with ink on duh. Inktober. Um, but I don't know where it went. I bought it years ago and I can't find it. So I've been using watercolors instead. Watercolors. I mean, it's not super strict. It's just, you know, doing a challenge and growing in it. But just painting with the black and the gray kind of like watercolors alone was always hard for me. And after doing a few more Inktobers now, I'm just like, oh, wow, it's finally flowing a little more. Um, and it was always hard. I just, I don't know why it was always so hard for me to do. <laughs> and now I can say like, wow, this feels a lot easier. Um, but really it's been the same thing. It's just me growing in it. Um, so that's why I kind of agree. I mean, I kind of think that it doesn't ever get easier. You're just getting stronger. Right. That's like my idea. And I've seen it a lot with my students when I'm teaching music. And I had a talk with this with one of my students yesterday. And I didn't even, like, click it with, like, oh, I'm talking about this this week. Because I was so focused on teaching. Because, you know, I'm such an amazing teacher. I just focus on teaching and get everything. (laughs) No. (laughs) Um, But I was just really focused into it that I completely forgot that was the topic for this week. (laughs) And I was, this kid is, like, really intelligent, though, so... (laughs) It doesn't count. He's like a very, very advanced Versus child. Versus all of our stupid students. <laughs> no. It's just, he's one of a kind, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So he was telling me like, this song has gotten a lot easier. However, it's not easier. And I'm like, whoa. Whoa. He gets into deep blown. areas of the mind sometimes. <laughs> it's he gets into all the crevices of the mind. <laughs> yes. Ugh. Anyway, um... Yeah, I mean, it's still a level four song or whatever. You know, all these songs he's playing, they're all level four. And level four is hard. But it feels easier because he's getting stronger. He's progressed from level one to level four. And you obviously get stronger when you work at it. So, yeah. Nice. (laughs) Very nice. So, yeah. So it'll get easier, but harder at the same time. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Just Um, so you know. Just so you know. (laughs) Buckle up. Yeah, and I guess before we close it, um, I think that for you as a creator or, yeah, artist slash creator, I mean, same thing. I think your goal shouldn't be, oh, I want this to be easier for me to do. When is it going to get easy? Because if you are a creator, creating is just a part of you. It's who you are and you want to learn and you want to grow. So instead of like, oh, when is this going to get easier? It should be more of... I can't wait to get stronger at this. Like, not easier, because nothing is ever easy. It's more like, I can't wait to, like, grow in this and know how to tackle it so that I can be successful and flow more in this area um, and not have to worry about feeling discouraged because I'm not growing or whatever. But I think the key word here is not, well, not the key word. The key word should not be easy. It should be growing and getting stronger, I guess. Um, Is what I'm trying to say? I don't know. My mind is all over now. It's all over. (laughs) It's all over. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, it really comes down to what you want to create, Mm -hmm. not whether it's going to be easy or hard. Nice. Yeah. So, anything else you wanted to add? Or I feel like we kind of covered it all. I think we covered it all. Yeah. So, for you listeners out there, what do you think? Do you agree, disagree that it does get easier? Do you believe never gets easier kind of like I guess that's kind of what I believe it it never gets easier it's just you as the creator but maybe somebody else will be like no it does get easier what are you talking about we'd like to know so let us know you can send an email to feedback at moco says create.com or the twitter or the twitters or you could you could send us a message on our facebook page yeah so many ways yeah so many ways I feel like not many people use facebook though that's true I'm just throwing it out there oh yeah we're on all the places. <laughs> We're on all the places, all the things. <laughs> all the things. Yep. Um, so Corey, what have you been working on? Well, I just started a new IT job this week, this Monday. So that's been most of my time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've not been creating that much. Oh. But today I will be working on the radio drama again. Yeah. Keep talking about it and it'll come out one day. <laughs> um, but because of the job, I've been kind of focused on that so now that i'm kind of settled in yeah the um, first week's always hard so yeah. you're adjusting is yeah, what's exactly. going on yeah so uh so we're planning on hopefully recording that tomorrow if i can finish up the script today mm-hmm. so we'll see how that goes uh Yay. the first episode will be like a 
a sci-fi uh, radio drama. Yeah. Every episode will be kind of a Maybe. different genre. It'll, it'll tend to be sci-fi, fantasy, mm-hmm. but it can be pretty much anything. That's yeah. a little, a little weird. Yeah, very, <laughs> yeah, very Twilight Zone. Uh, Welcome to Night Vale. Mm-hmm. Not so much like Welcome to Night Vale because that one's more of a comedy, and that one's just like one character. Mm-hmm. But it'll be similar in some ways. Um, but yeah, that's the main thing. And then I'm still working on a horror short story for my writing group that I'll hopefully have done for next week sometime, like a week from tomorrow, I think. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm working on. What yeah. are you working on? Um, I'm still doing the Inktobers, applying myself Inktobers. more with it. I wasn't really able to this week, um, because I was working on other arts for other people. Okay. <laughs> but I did two or three Inktobers last weekend, so I'm going to go for that again. Try to do three this weekend and see what happens. Nice, Um nice. And yeah, Inktober's been so much fun. I'm definitely going to keep doing it throughout the year and growing and get and find my India ink somewhere. Yeah, or somewhere. Buy it. I just need to buy it. <laughs> it's just like there's so many art supplies I need to buy. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> I want to kind of like budget with how much I spend on art supplies because, you know. They be expensive. Yeah, they be expensive. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to see, like, okay, what's priority art supply? And what do I really, really need? So I don't know if ink, the India ink's on the top of my list, unfortunately. <laughs> but, hey, I got watercolors, so why not just use that? Even yeah. though it's not the inks. But... Yeah, you should punch the microphone. <clears throat> yeah, okay. <laughs> I almost did. Um, yeah, and then I'm just still doing the photography assistant job. It's... Like officially ending next week, ending next week. But I'm learning a lot about photography in the process, and it's been really fun. Um, it's something that I was always intrigued about and was always interested in. But I just, you know, I was busy with other things. So, and I'm just like, I'm never going to be a photographer. Why am I going to invest in time of something that I'm not going to do ever? <laughs> I'm not going to do. Not, I don't know where that accent came from. I'm not going to do. <laughs> but anyway, I'm learning more about photography, which is really fun because I just love learning. I love learning new things. So that's kind of what I've been up to. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'll just go ahead and start about what inspired me since I'm talking. Is that cool or do you want to go first? Fine. You go first. Okay. Fine. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can punch the mic this time. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to actually touch it. <laughs> um... So I was thinking back this week, I was like, what inspired me? There wasn't anything that really popped out, but um, I've been wanting to mention this song for a while, and I just haven't gotten around to it. And it's by Mother Mother. I think we've talked about them before for another inspiration um, in the past. I don't remember. But um, yeah, Mother Mother, Canadian band. If you haven't heard of them, you should. If you're true followers of Moco, you should know who they are. Anyway, <laughs> well, um, like they a have a, <laughs> what? You're a true follower of Moco. You will listen to oh, Okay. <laughs> My mother is no longer going to listen to us now. Because <laughs> um, we are a cult. <laughs> She'll be like, Monica, what are you saying? Um, anyway, Mother Mother's song is called Get Up. And it was kind. it came out like on a week where it was kind of hard for the two of us to... Um, just work on our MoCo projects and our writing and painting in general, I feel like. And I loved, this is like the first time I actually listened to the lyrics. Wow. I know. It's a first. I never usually do, but this one just really stuck with me. And it was like, get up, put your head on straight, get up. It's kind of like, you know, there are things that tackle you down sometimes. All you need to do is just get up, like get up, put your head on straight and get to it and just do it. And like, I was what and you sent it to me i think and you said this is our theme song (laughs) um so yeah i listen to it a lot um because i kind of like listening to things repetitively unlike some people (laughs) but yeah i've listened to it a lot since it came out and yeah there's my inspiration (laughs) that's your inspiration so my inspiration is not really an inspiration it's just the one (laughs) thing that i've watched recently yeah um, I started uh, Stargate SG-1. Oh, boy. The first season. The first. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> it's like, in some ways, it's unique, and then other ways are like a blatant Star Trek ripoff. Yeah. Certain characters <laughs> and just... 
Man. Story elements and things. I'm just like, this is such a like blatant oh, rip off. Geez. But uh, it's fun. Yeah. It's just like good, silly sci-fi fun. Oh my god. At least so far, it's not exactly like challenging my expectations, <laughs> uh-huh. let's say. But um, you know, it's for like 97, so it's a little older, but still, I was I was expecting a little more from it. But yeah. Maybe it gets better as it goes on. Maybe. It's still early. <laughs> the first season of uh, sci-fi shows tend to be kind of stinky. Oh, I bet. So we'll see where it goes. <laughs> I remember watching that. I think I started the first episode, but I didn't finish And when I was younger. And I was, like, kind of young where you don't really differentiate between cheesy and not cheesy, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, something is cheesy, but... It's not until you're much older. It's like, oh, my gosh, what? This is stupid. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But even then, I couldn't finish it. I was like, yeah, this isn't. Yeah. And had your MacGyver man. I know. I loved MacGyver growing up. But, like, mm, no, it was mm. very different. <laughs> That's funny, though. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah. That's, that's it. I'm still like... She's clearing throat. her throat. She's still sick. Well, because I'm not sick anymore. It's just like the remnants. The Does remnants that make sense? of sickness. Is that what you say? Yeah, the remnants is still there, but it's going away. I hope I don't sound too sick this week because last <laughs> week I sounded sick. Oh, poor thing. But anyway, I'm getting better. Thank you all for your prayers. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Nobody prayed for me. Thoughts and prayers, I please. Did. I don't think I... Want to get sick now. <laughs> Yep, so there you go. And until next time, Moko Moko says says create. create!